expenditures at Target, Walgreens, Best Buy, a number of charges that raise questions in our mind. Yeah, like, check this out. Two, two charges at Walgreens on the same day for the exact same amount. $505.95. Let me tell you what this is. You know what those are? Those are ATM withdrawals. You know how I know? Because of that $595. That was the fee. They took out $500 twice from ATM machines using Village Credit Card. I guess it wouldn't let them take a thousand at once, so they had to do two. Hey y'all, it's your girl J9E. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, and get into the comments to let me know what you think about this, okay? We're gonna react to Lightfoot's, you know, what she found, what was, what's going on, and, and then express how we just know how Tiffany is somewhere looking right now. What she's wearing, what kind of, you know, she got makeup on or no, favorite wig, of course, <laughs> you know, whole checklist, all right? But let's go on and listen to and we get to react to as we are, are going through because it isn't live. So yeah, that's fun. <laughs> let's hop on in and see what she found. What did she find? So let's jump into the specifics. Uh, many of you know that the uh, village's fiscal year runs from May 1 to April 30th. So it's in um, those 12 months, but they span two years. Okay. Um, certain financial disclosures are mandated under state law that the village reports to uh, the comptroller of the state each fiscal year. Um, two documents that we're gonna talk specifically about are the annual financial report, and you see the citation there, um, it's a state law, and the audited financial statements. The village has not and let me repeat that. The village has not complied with these statutory requirements since fiscal year 2021. Mm. There's no annual financial report available after 2021 and no audited financial statements um, uh, after 2021. That's as long as she's been in there. So since she's been in there, <laughs> there ain't been no budget since she's been in there. No budget since she showed up gotcha roger Dyer. so what that means is the information that we're providing you has not been thoroughly audited by a cpa but we do have information coming from an uh an entity that essentially serves um as the finance department um, of the village okay <clears throat> historically from what we can tell the village has had small or no um full-time financial staff um, at t various times, even though statutorily um, there's a provision for a city treasurer, none exists and hasn't for some time. There's a provision for uh, a finance director. There's been intermittent people that have served that role, but that role has been vacant as of May of this year. And before that, the person who held the role started working part time as of the end of December in 2023. So as you can see, given the lean or no financial staff, there's a lot of dependence upon the John Kasparic accounting firm, which is a functionally um, operated as the village's finance department for some time. Okay. What we have uh, examined are monthly financial reports from January of 2021 to May of 2024 produced by the Kasparic firm. Okay. And as I mentioned, due to the village's failure to um, conduct an audited financial statement, there, we have to caveat the accuracy of the information, but we feel fairly confident based upon um, lining out not only the monthly reports, but looking at bank statements that match up with the information uh, that's in the financial reports. And we had the opportunity uh, to talk to some of the folks that uh, the Casper firm who are responsible for managing the finances of the village and that work is ongoing. As of um, May 30th of this year, mm -hmm. the village's general fund was in a net deficit position, meaning that there is um, insufficient funds in that um, general fund. As we mentioned, the general fund is used to account for the majority of the village's day-to-day -day, uh, operations, mm. including payroll and vendor payments. Damn. 
The village's special revenue fund and debt service fund, however, are in a positive position, but each of those funds are restricted funds, meaning you cannot borrow from one to give to the other. And that is what's causing in part uh, the financial crisis. What's next you can see is um, a graphic that depicts where we started as of April, where the village started as of April of 22, with positive of $5.6 million in the general fund, and where we are as of um, May of 2024, which is wow. a negative 3.65 million. Wow! Mayor Life, if I may. Yes. Just kind of as a summary now, just quick numbers. So in a two year span, we're talking about a $9 million swing or $9 million of deficit over that course of time. Would that be yes. most accurate? I'm going to tell you how she done it. I'm going to tell you how Tiffany done it. Because she kept talking about them grants. <laughs> she kept coming in there talking about a $6 million grant that nobody ever saw. But she insisted on putting it in the budget as if it was a part of the money that they had and spending it. And never did it never became a thing. It never showed up. It never was anywhere. So she put everything else in the deficit. So she, it's like, that was 5.8 million. She says, oh, we got 6 million coming. So then they spend 6 million. The 6 million never shows up, which means they spent the whole 5.8 million <laughs> that they already had. Oh, pretending like it was going to be 11, but instead never happened. And so now they are three, oh, how much, how many times? Put it in it put it in the comments how many times have you heard tiffany talk about how we are like in a surplus <laughs> we have a surplus and i kept saying i don't think tiffany knows what a surplus is <laughs> giving her a little bit of credit i'll say maybe she didn't know what it was i'll say maybe she didn't know okay if she did know it don't matter she's going to jail anyway okay all right turning now to the increasing expenditures increasing the expenditures yes over the last three go. fiscal years, the average monthly expenditures of the village have increased by nearly 30%. Mm. As you can see in the graphic, in fiscal year 2022, on average, the village spent about $1.9 million a month. But in the last fiscal year, that amount had climbed to $2.5 million. Mm -hmm. These increasing expenditures have not been accompanied by corresponding increases in revenue. Nope. Again, as you see in the graph on the blue bars, the revenues have remained relatively the same over that time period, around just over $24 million, while expenditures have climbed from $23 million in 2022 to $30 million in 2024. Ultimately, in fiscal years 2023 and 2024, expenditures exceeded revenue. Specifically, in 2024, it was over $5 million more in expenditures than revenues. Ain't that something? Look at that, 2022. How much they had going out was less than what they had, which is what it's supposed to be. Otherwise, deficit. Okay. Then 2023, she was feeling bold. She was like, you know what? You know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to put on for my city. I put on for my city. <laughs> and look what she did. She showed up and showed out $4.4 million, $4 million worth. Okay. Extra. So deficit, immediate deficit. Okay. And then the next year, she said, you know what? I'm going to outdo myself. I'm going to do just a little bit more. That's an extra. Hey, come on. It's just $2, $2 million more. And she done it again. And now she's somewhere talking about, it's, it, it's, it, it's all a show. Okay. Y'all been bamboozled. Run them up. Let us stray. Look what she did. Tiffany, you ain't shit. No, you ain't. To look further at the Ooh. increasing expenditures, the table on the screen highlights the two village departments that are the main drivers of this spending increase. The General Administration and Administrative Compensation Department and the Police Department. Turning first to the General Administration Department. Okay. Turning first to the General Administration line. The increase in expenditures here has grown about approximately 47%. This was around $6.4 million in fiscal year 2022, and it was $9.4 million in fiscal year 2024. Wow. There have been increases in general administration spending near, in nearly every area, but there are a handful that stick out the most. Um, as you can see on the first line, the largest driver of this increase 
is a more than double change in liability insurance cost. It's gone from 1.2 million in fiscal year 2022 to 3.2 million in fiscal year 2024. Other areas where we see large increases are miscellaneous expenditures, settlements, legal fees, and telephone. Let me just add regarding the, uh, the legal fees. <clears throat> These are everything that we're representing to you tonight are things that have been booked in one of the general ledgers or otherwise. We know that the legal fees that have been booked so far um, are underestimated because there are a number of legal fees that have yet to be paid. And obviously with the litigation um, that's uh, been filed, particularly uh, by vendors who have not been paid, um, those legal fees will definitely, are, are, this is a very conservative estimate of what those fees actually are. Let me drill a, li a little bit down also in what we're seeing so far um, with the police department. Um, those expenditures have increased approximately 21% since FY22. Uh, Some of that is obviously driven by um, the union contracts and making sure that there's retro pay um, and that uh, the police officers are compensated according to the co collective bargaining agreement. Um, within the police department expenditures, um, categories um, with large increases include overtime, other miscellaneous expenses, and I will tell you, we don't know exactly what that is, but we're working on um, impacting that, unpacking that, contractual services, other professional services, and medical um, insurance. I'll tell you what that miscellaneous was. Hold on. Yeah, the miscellaneous fees. Look at that. Other miscellaneous fees. Overtime has doubled. More than doubled. Because Tiffany got them just being paid just to exist <laughs> you know the police was loving this job honey other contractual services professional services and medical insurance what in the world this is other professional services and medical um, insurance we wanted to highlight for you particularly given overtime, what we saw is two um, outliers um, in officers, Officer Terry Young and Officer William Reed. Um, both of these individuals in the last two years have earned more in overtime than their base compensation. And you can see these numbers here. Uh, Officer uh, Terry Young in FY2, 2023 earned $194,290 total given the base salary and the overtime. And then often, and then in FY 2024, that increased to $227,351, combining the base salary and the overtime. Officer Reed um, for FY 2023 uh, had a total earnings of $145,450 and officer, and in uh, FY 2024, 192, in 732. We thought, thought it also important for you to know that Acting Chief Lacey has accumulated overtime. It's Look at that. Oh my God. Look at this. $215,000. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. 2022, he was making, he made 39000 2013, Oh, look, got me a little more money. Oh, I almost doubled it. $67,000. The next year, mm, we are, we, we kicking, we kicking up dust around a hundred thousand, ninety-six thousand dollars 200. Oh, this is his overtime. Holy shit. Wait, no, this, so this is his overtime in these years. This is just his, oh, oh my God. Wait, this is just his overtime? Hold on. Our understanding that he is not part of the collective bargaining unit and has not been uh, for some time, which under normal circumstances would mean that he is not entitled to overtime. But as you he's not even entitled to overtime and he got $215,000 worth. 
<laughs> you can see here for FY22, FY23, and FY24, and in, we're now in fiscal year 2025. Through those four years, he's accumulated $215,747,000 just in overtime. That's just his overtime, y'all. I'm thinking this is how much he was making. <laughs> That's just his overtime. Oh my God. She thought she was paying for silence, y'all. How? Oh my God. Tiffany's going to be so mad when he turned on her too. Because he going to turn too. He wasn't even supposed to have that. So he going to be in trouble. <laughs> and he's definitely going to tell. <laughs> he going to tell everything that he know on Tiff Tiff. All these people who she was just robbing the people to pay are all going to turn on her. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's, that is great. $215,000 in overtime in three and a half years. Oh my God. And not just that, he wasn't even entitled to overtime. He's not even eligible for it. <laughs> you ever wonder why Tiffany did not want to show them the books? She did, did not want them knowing about the finances. There you go. This is why. Now we're going to move, ladies and gentlemen, to unfunded expenditures. And this is really focused on, as we alluded to, we're going to move to unfunded expenditures. And this is really focused on checks that have been approved by the board um, from warrant lists that have come before the board of trustees, but held and not sent mm. to the vendor. Ooh, 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 ooh. Everybody pay attention. Based on the records that we have reviewed since March of 2023, the village has been unable to pay all of its monthly expenditures uh, with available cash balance. Since that time, nearly every month, a portion of the checks approved and printed have been held by the village due to unavailability of funds. Per records from the John Kasparic firm, as of June 18, 2024, there are 589 checks totaling over $6 million that have been approved, printed, but not uh, transmitted to vendors. Mm. And that is a big driver of the deficit in the general fund. Wow. This over $6 million in health checks, um, I want to caution, does not account for additional monies potentially owed by the village to vendors for which checks have not even been printed. These categories, which we are looking into, include, for example, um, invoices that have been received by village departments, but for one reason or another may not have been um, entered into the accounting system, which is called My Viewpoint. These invoices could um, have been entered into the accounting system, but not been approved by department heads or by the village administrator. And this could also include invoices that have not been approved by payment for the Board of Trustees. You're aware that from time to time, the warrant list are presented, the trustees say, pay this, not pay that. Well, those checks that are on the warrant list uh, roll over from time to time. And it probably makes sense just to explain really briefly. There is not a centralized repository for vendors to put their checks in electronically, or their invoices, I should say, so that it's automatically in the system. It has to be either hand delivered or sent via email. It goes to the appropriate department head, then it's up to that department head to approve um, and enter those invoices into the MyPoint system. And it depends upon the dollar amount of the invoice, who has final approval, for those invoices to make it onto the warrant list, but that's the way the process works now. It will not surprise you that one of the recommendations that we will have when we finish um, our work is that the village invest in an automated system so that nothing falls between the cracks. The vendor will be able to see real time, where is my invoice moving through the system? And you'll know where it sits, um, either with the department head or, or otherwise. This is crazy. I'm learning so much. Right. We'll turn now to discuss the cash status of the village. So the village has 22 different bank accounts. Okay. A majority of those bank accounts are designated for the special revenue funds or bond escrow funds. So the money in those bank accounts is restricted and shouldn't be used for day-to-day -day operations. Okay. I'll also note that these 22 accounts don't include the pension assets. The pension assets are held in separate trust accounts. 
Most of the village's expenditures each month are paid from one main operating bank account. As of June 30th, 2024, that bank account had a balance of $715,000. As of April 30th, 2021, that account had a bad balance of almost $1.5 million. So a decrease of over $750,000. In addition to the main operating account, historically the village has held its excess cash in an account known as Illinois funds. Illinois funds are interest bearing accounts that are managed by the Illinois treasurer's office that allow municipalities to earn interest on their excess cash balance. The balance in the Illinois funds account as of June 30th was only $3,900. Damn. As of April 30th, 2021, that balance was over $2 million. So the balance of excess cash has dropped by over $2 million in that time period. Man, that's crazy. That's a village bank account. It looked like a regular person's bank account. Like that looked like just one, like a like a like a real regular person too. <laughs> Three thousand nine hundred dollars, one one rent, one car payment. That's that's all y'all got. That's fucked up. Tiffany going to jail. You hear me? She going to jail. The monthly financial reports include a summary of the unrestricted cash balances of the village each month. Mm -hmm. Within these summaries, the balance reflected already accounts for those held checks that Mayor Lightfoot was just discussing, checks that have been issued but haven't cleared because they haven't been sent yet to vendors. What you can see on the chart is that the unrestricted cash balance of the general fund has dropped from almost $5 million as of April 2022, and it is now accounting for all of the checks that have yet to be sent is now in a deficit position of over five and a half million dollars as of may of 2024. jesus it really puts into perspective all those times when the trustees were in there trying to control this situation because they were watching it go out of hand and they're like it's this is not going to be good this is going to be bad we need to stop this like something is wrong here please listen to us and the people in the audience the people who were there like the, the they were in there like give her a chance y'all just hating <laughs> y'all need to listen y'all is terrible what about the people <laughs> and luckily they didn't just go you know what fuck it y'all don't care about your money why should we right and instead of doing that they just steady the course they were like look they gonna be mad at us whatever but this shit right here ain't right and they just stuck to their guns and then look what it turned out to be she literally ran them down to two dollars like they, they got two dollars but they owe twenty thousand million quadrillion. okay oh my god and then she and right as she's coming out of office she's gonna be coming out of office going off with her money that she stashed away because like i said she wasn't spending none of her money on herself i mean like she wasn't spending no money on herself none of her own money on herself she was spending the village money on herself <laughs> Here we go. we, we thought it was important to give you a little bit of insight um, into credit card use um, by uh, village employees. Um, we do not have complete information yet. Um, it is our hope that we will get further cooperation and be able to have a complete picture of credit cards. I'm gonna tell you, the people are rolling over, so they getting. They get they you know they she get she getting them to roll <laughs> they all steady rolling she gonna get she gonna get the rest of them and then she gonna have all the information but we wanted to share with you um what we do know so far we are aware that the, over this time period from 2021 to the present the village used six different credit cards um, at various points from january 2021 through may of this year Four American Express cards um, that uh, appear to have been used uh, by various folks uh, within the police department. Uh -huh. The statements for these accounts were addressed to Ernest Mobley, Robert Collins, and Lewis Lacey. Uh -huh. uh, may or may I interject there for a moment? Because we have uh, 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 it was former Deputy Chief Mobley is, is present with us and an amazing officer, so I'm sorry there was no mis misuse or misconduct on that behalf. So I want to make sure I 
uh, state that. Um, we have some knowledge of that, but we'll share that um, as part of the final report. There's one American Express card and for which statements are addressed to Keith Freeman, uh, the village administrator. And there was one fifth third card, um, which statements are addressed to the village. We've been told that that card is no longer um, in use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we Ain't that something? They all running around with these credit cards and then they just canceled the one that's for the, for the trustees. <laughs> And then said, and then told the trustees that they did it. Y'all canceled it. We ain't doing it. Y'all did. And they all running around. Three different cops. Okay. The village administrator. Everybody got American Express card. She considered herself a CEO. And I tell you, she she was running this company like a badass company. Like, 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 like one of those pretend companies. You know, when you create one just so you can, you know, funnel money through. That's what she did to this village. Understand from the records we've received from uh, the Kasparic uh, company and in, in interviews that we've con conducted that receipts for credit card purchases are rarely provided. <laughs> Further, we understand that the credit card balance, because it comes due, of course, every month, we all know that, um, is paid as a matter of course. And it was reflected in the accounting records as miscellaneous police department expenditures. We're looking into what is the reason and rationale for that. But what this means is that these- Wow. So that's what the myth, that's all that money that was sitting on there in that miscellaneous police. They were putting away those things. They were like, we got to put it somewhere. We'll just put it in this line here. <laughs> miscellaneous under the police. <laughs> these credit card um, bills that are paid do not appear on warrant lists and are therefore not presented to the board for approval. Again, that will be a recommendation that we make. And the board is obviously aware of this issue, um, which is in part why they took the action that they took the other day to um, rein in the credit card spending. We also understand from the Kasparic uh, company um, that the only time a credit card charge would be reflected on a warrant list is if a receipt is provided. And as I said, our information is that the receipts are rarely provided. Mm. We want to highlight a couple of um, credit card purchases. <laughs> You're having the same reaction that we did with this office. <laughs> so in particular, we were very concerned to see the top three purchases that were highlighted for you um, that were booked on uh, January 5th of 2023. That's roughly $40,000, a little more than that, in credit card purchases on Amazon in the same day. And our understanding, and our understanding is that the village does not have an Amazon account. These are somebody using one of the credit cards and charging these amounts using your wow. tax We suspect we're going to see, as you can see, expenditures at Target, Walgreens, um, Best Buy, a number of charges that raise questions in our mind. Yeah, like, like check this out. Like this two Walgreens, two, two charges at Walgreens on the same day for the exact same amount. 505.95, 505.95. Let me tell you what this is. You know what those are? Those are ATM withdrawals. You know how I know? Cause of that five fucking 95. That's the fee. That was the fee. They took out $500 twice from ATM machines using Village credit card. So they took out a thousand dollars through an ATM machine, 500 each. I guess it wouldn't let them take a thousand at once. So they had to do two. And it was a, the charges for it was five ninety five each for each one. That's why it was five oh five ninety five twice same day. Look at that shit. Look at this Best Buy exactly four hundred dollars exactly four hundred dollars few days apart exactly one eight hundred dollars. What exactly what is this? What, what what are we looking at here? Wayfair. What are you buying for eight thousand dollars at Wayfair? Are these legitimate purchases using the credit card? What we've also found in the credit cards 
Um, I know that there's been a lot of interest in travel, and we are highlighting here on this slide some of the travel that Ooh, is reflected travel. in the Village Credit Cards. Okay. Birmingham, Alabama, and Montgomery, Alabama, in March of 2023 with five known travelers. Washington, D.C., in 2023 with four known travelers. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas, Nevada, with eight known travelers. Ooh. Jackson, Mississippi, in June of 2023 with three known travelers. Austin, Texas, in July of 2023 with three known travelers. Portland, Oregon, in July of 2023 with four travelers. Central and Southern Illinois in September of 2023. I think you're aware of what happened during that time. 10 hotel rooms booked during that travel. <clears throat> Traveled in New York City in October of 2023, one traveler. Atlanta, Georgia in November of 2023, one traveler on the Villages credit cards. And I, I, I caveat that because we will, and are continuing to look at I'll say cross-pollination between the village and the township and the credit card use there as well. I like that cross-pollination. Oh, sounds scientific, girl. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> this is terrible. Who is this one traveler traveling alone to New York City and Atlanta? If I had to guess who that was, for some reason, I feel like that's Freeman. Oh, they just sound like Freeman to me. Those two, then New York City, one person. Cause Tiffany ain't traveling by her fucking self. So it ain't her. <laughs> That's it. It, it. This this right here, these two, these, I bet these are Freeman. What, what, what was he doing? What was he doing? So let me let me summarize for you okay. kind of where what we presented, what we found so far regarding the finances. Yes. The general us. fund is used to pay the vast majority of the village's expenses, as you heard. As of May 31st of this year, the fund had a negative balance of 3.65 million. Mm. The village's general fund expenditures have exceeded revenues the past two fiscal years, uh, ending April 30th, 2023, and April 30th, 2024. Mm -hmm. As of June 30th of this year, the cash on hand in unrestricted accounts is insufficient to cover the held checks valuing $6.1 million. <clears throat> we are in the current fiscal year of FY 2025, and the village has no budget that's been passed this year. The village's financial records have not been audited since FY 2021, and the village has not filed the mandated state annual reports since FY 2021. Jesus. So where are we in terms of next steps? She's trying to get the whole village uh, 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 taken away by the feds. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, regarding the financial information, um, there's a lot more work that we need to do, as I indicated. We've just recently got a lot of information in the door that is reflected, for the most part, in this presentation. But there are other things that we have asked for, and we're hoping that we're going to get further cooperation from the Kasparic accounting firm. Um, additional details regarding credit card spending um, and any receipts that might exist. Detailed accounting re records and reconciliations, check registers, which is uh, um, important. Detailed accounting of inner tra fund um, transfers and balances. <clears throat> what we're seeing, and we need to really look at the detail here, is that there is a um, transfer from one fund, in some instances there's restricted funds, into another fund and vice versa. Additional uh, detail, we're looking at what are the financial policies and practices in place and whether or not those need to be changed, updated, um, or uh, beefed up in any way. We are continuing to look at what happened in Las Vegas. There are two trips, one in um, May of 2022 and a second in May of 2023. And as I alluded to earlier, um, the relationship and the intermingling, inter intermingling of funds and personnel with Thornton Township is something we're very focused on as well. Mm -hmm. We refer to the trustees. Yes. I know that's hard to clap at when that's your money that just left. <laughs> that's your money that just left. What's so crazy is I wonder how many, what, what percentage of the people in this room right now who are clapping now at this horrible moment <laughs> And are were supporters of Tiffany and kind of backing her at first. 
and and looking down on the trustees like they was just being petty and they was jealous <laughs> what percentage of them are just kind of you know thinking back and going ooh okay i hope a lot i hope all of the ones who were are now okay and i hope that they're big enough people to be able to admit that okay and be thankful to the trustees for sticking their neck out okay trying to help y'all all right trying to do their job what they were put in position for okay not being yes men and just following tiffany because she likes to throw little gifts and money at you that it belongs to the people she paying them off with y'all's money <laughs> you know how much she don't respect y'all when y'all come in there and y'all be like y'all just need to stop fighting just she the mayor just give her a chance why she and she right and she know that she robbing you she knows she's stealing your money and she think you dumb and this is how and you you think she thinks oh how wonderful what nice people that they're bet they're they're sticking up for me no she thinks these dummies don't even know that i'm robbing the shit out of them look at them they right dumb that's what she was thinking Okay, I just need for y'all to know that. All right. <laughs> that light foot stuck her foot in that one. Okay, if anybody's ever wondering what she's getting paid for, why they got her there, this is ridiculous. This is crazy. Why can't they just whatever, whatever? Okay, if you don't think she's doing her job, I'm gonna tell you, they would not have been able to get any of this stuff. Okay, without her. <laughs> she's over there rolling them over. They're over there rolling over. Okay, if you think Lightfoot ain't got nothing to do with the fact that Keith Freeman is rolling over the way he is right now, <laughs> he's trying to, he is trying to kiss up as much as he can and get whatever connections he can to save himself as much as possible because he is knee balls deep, okay, in the bullshit. He's balls deep. Him and her are going to get the same amount of charges, okay? He could kiss up as much as he wants to. It's too late. And he already got like, yeah, he already got, a history of this so yeah he need to go to jail he just need to go he just need to go to jail just period it's for the best it's for him it's for his own safety oh since i didn't get to catch that live i thought i would catch it not live and just kept just go over the part that i wanted to see anyway just to finance to see what was going on with these here finances okay and now we have a pretty good idea of how terrible it is and how they definitely are in a deficit they definitely are broke they definitely need to get rid of some people and people was getting paid. Like, oh my gosh, Lacey. The biggest piece I got out of this is Lacey. Lacey's ass getting $215,000 in overtime when he isn't even eligible for overtime, period. That part, that's crazy to me, okay? And that's why I say he going to jail too because actually I pointed this out before. The what, Something that's really gonna make it easy for them to roll people over on top of, te on top of tip tip is because... Uh, they're gonna owe this money back they, 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 she's paid she's giving them all this money that they ain't supposed to have they're gonna have to pay this money back they're gonna have to so they're gonna be cutting deals they're gonna be cutting deals because they can't pay the money back they already spent it they don't have it so they're gonna have to roll over and every single person is gonna roll over on tiffany and tiffany is getting some kingpin type charges <laughs> she want to be the leader so bad she want to be the main one, the king, the president, so bad. The CEO, if you will. She want to be it so bad. And now she gets to be a kingpin. Congratulations, Tiff. You did it. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Yes, I am. Okay. Y'all behave. All right. Don't be a Tiff Tiff. You're going to end up in the popos with the prisons. You know what I'm saying? It's shackles in an orange suit. Okay. Orange and white stripes would be nice, right? Like a creamsicle. <laughs> Mama love you. Yes, she do. Ooh. Peace.